today I want to talk about the genesis of uh, principal stresses. Uh, remember, you have your Cartesian stress state established uh, when you know the six numbers, the, the three normal stresses, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, and the three tangential stresses, a tau xy, a tau yz, and tau zx. Uh, when you know these for a, a particular point uh, in a given coordinate system, uh, the, these stresses act on the face of a stress element which is an infinitesimal parallel of pi pad, uh, whose faces are normal to the coordinate axes. And remember your cross shears, your tau xy and your tau yx are actually equal here. Here we make the cut. The figure shows a tetrahedron which is the result of a cut of the plane BCD of an original parallel pipette stress element. The, result, the resulting cut leaves the hidden faces of the original stress element clipped but otherwise intact. Let A be the area of the triangle BCD and let N be the normal to that triangle. Let the angle between N and x be theta x and similarly theta y and theta z can be defined for the y and z directions. Then the direction cosines of n can be given as follows. Essentially L, M, and N are the coordinates of a unit vector in the direction of n. Then by projection the areas of the other three faces of the tetrahedron can be written. AL is the area of the OCD triangle face and AM is the area of the triangle OBC and AN is the area of the triangle ODB. Let's denote using capital X, capital Y, and capital Z. Let's denote those as the three components of stress that are parallel to the coordinate axes acting on this inclined face, the BCD face. Then the component of force acting on the face B, C, D in the direction of the X axis is actually A, X. So that's a force, A times X. Also the components of the forces in the X directions acting on the three other face of the faces of the tetrahedron are minus A, L, sigma x acting on the face OCD minus AM tau xy acting on the face OBC and minus AN tau zx acting on the face OBD. So a corresponding force balance equation for the tetrahedron in the x direction could be just simply summing up those four forces and setting them equal to zero. Similarly, you could do this for the y and also z components in the y and z directions. All of those equations would have a common A the result could be put into a matrix form where A has been divided out. Where, remember, the uh, cross shears are equal. The previous equation that I showed you for the X direction is actually the first row of this equation. 
An equation for y component would have been the second row of this equation. And for the z component would have been the last row of this equation. Thus the components x, y, and z of stress on any plane defined by the direction cosines L, M, and N can be calculated by this equation provided that the stress state given by sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, tau xy, tau yz, and tau zx is known for a point in terms of the specified coordinate system. Pondering that the stresses x, y, z has a component normal to the plane BCD and a second component tangential to the plane BCD, one could write this equation. Where the scalar sigma is the normal stress magnitude and where the scalar tau is the tangential shear stress magnitude where P, Q, and R are the direction cosines of the direction of the tangential shear and where the two vectors are perpendicular. Remember that uh, the vector L, M, and N is a vector normal to the plane and the vector P, Q, and R is a vector that is in the plane or tangent to the plane. That's in general. But in the special case, we would have where tau equals zero and actually the stress components would be in the same direction as the normal, scaled by what would be a principal stress. Or we could write it in this way from the matrix equation, which is the same as this equation. Obviously, this is an eigenvector eigenvalue problem where the eigenvalues are the three roots, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, to the cubic given in sigma formed from the determinant shown here. This determinant equation expands to the cubic given in uh, equation 315 in your book. Thus the eigenvalues are the principal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. And the associated eigenvectors are the corresponding directions the L, M, and N vectors for those principal stresses. Some notes. For a general choice of L, M, and N, the, the sigma tau pair in this relationship lies in the shaded part of this figure or its borders. This is figure 312 in your book. And remember that we talk about the maximum shear stress as being the radius of the biggest circle. Another note is the 3x3 three three matrix given here is called the stress tensor. And that concludes our presentation for the day.